Well, good morning, Ewald Nation. Good morning, good people. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. As we are coming in, well, she should already be there, right? Because it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, I think so if you come already, in 11 already, 1, 11 2, <laughs> go ahead and let's do some shout out. Hello, high five. Let's use Virtual our hug emojis today, this morning. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and share mine so I can get there. Yeah, so, oh, join us for soul therapy. Yeah, we're still talking about soul therapy. I'm going to share it so we can say hello to everyone. I want to see your guys' faces on here. Well, not, well we can't see faces. We can't see, see faces. emojis, right? See emojis. Yep. See hearts. See waves. See claps. See hands up. Hey. Yep. We'll take whatever we can get. And we are grateful. Um, you could have been anywhere today, but you have locked in on us. And we are truly grateful to God for that. Whether you're watching us from around the corner or around the world, uh, we want you to know that we are, our prayers are for you. Um, we are, always speak God's best. We pray God's best for your life in every area. That his grace abounds and over floods, mm -hmm. overflows and floods your life in every area. Um, okay. sweetie, sweetie, you're next. Well, I just want to go before we go into everything, some announcements that I do have. <clears throat> okay. And uh, drum roll, it's gonna be countdown pretty soon. We have like maybe Boom. 13, 12 more days. What is it to the 22nd? How many days is that? The day is the what? The 10th? Today's the 10th. Wow, 12 only days. 12 more days, 12 ladies, days. ladies, ladies. Table talk conference. Fearfully, wonderfully, may point blank. Come on, register. Uh, announcement is that we have four seats left for our teens. So go ahead. If you have a teenager, you have a niece, you have a, uh, a just a spiritual daughter, a loved one that's a teenager, go ahead and register them today. Now, now, now. Openings are for the um, ladies as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I know sometimes we say, oh, I'll get to it, I'll register. But we need to register now so we'll know uh, the number of that we have and prepare for you all because we are preparing for you. This conference, Fearfully Wonderfully Made, is a time for you to come and see yourself as well as see Jesus, okay? Yes. Uh, it's going to be rest for your soul. It's going to be transformation. So I tell you, go ahead and register now and say, hey, I already registered. Go ahead and share it. Share it on your page, uh, Fearfully Wonderful Made Conference here in the Tampa Bay area, the 22nd through the 24th. And hey, don't forget now, it's going to be a ball on ball. Saturday night, a royal ball five just years. for you. Five years. Yeah, five years. Yes, five years. Five years. Woo, five years, Royal Ball. Um, the transformation will be that weekend and just we're going to celebrate that night in a royal way, okay? Um, so, mm. ladies, get your gown, get your formal wear. If you say, I don't have a gown, I haven't found a gown, just wear a formal wear. Just get beautiful for yourself and before yeah. the Lord, okay? So, we look to see you there on that weekend. So, go ahead and register, okay? If you know someone, they say, I haven't registered yet, say, girl, you better go ahead and register. Girl, you better right. register. <laughs> Go ahead and register. Also, what else is happening in EWAL? Destiny Christian Academy um, is a ministry of every walk of life. And let me tell you, we're uh, excited to announce that we're opening our um, pre-K um, kindergarten um, classroom this year. Mm -hmm. We uh, is Registration is open. So go ahead and um, call the number that's going to be on your um, screen here. And also, we're it's openings for students and openings for um, teachers, when I say teachers, teachers called by God to serve, minister to our children. Yeah. So if that's you and you want to be a part of Destiny <clears throat> Christian Academy to serve and minister to our children, please let us know. I would love to meet with you in that, um, in the area of, uh, serving our children. And that's actually, um, the announcements that I have. You have anything? Uh, no, I don't. Don't, don't have anything. No, I just like to say to all the brothers that were on last night for encouragement. Mm -hmm. Man, it was a what blessing. Happened? It was amazing. What they said. <laughs> it was Vegas. So what happens there stays there. Um, it, it was it was a beautiful time of fellowship. It was a beautiful time of, of uh, truth and sharing. And I was honored. And thank you so much for being a part. And we will be on again on this coming Saturday. All right. Uh, back to back this mm -hmm, month, mm -hmm. and um, man, it, it'll bless your socks off. I think one person said it like this: "It's necessary mm -hmm. uh, for character development. It's necessary. It's needful. 
And Amen. we are truly th grateful to God for all the men that have joined on and all the men that have been a part up until this time. So, well, just shout out once again and coming on saying good morning, Ewall family and friends. That's the Brown family. Good morning. Good morning. See the Harden family on. That's what I see on my side here. So the Harden family, I say good too. morning to each and every one of you that's joining in. Let's continue on with the um, emojis and just give a shout out. It's good to see you guys on. Um, let's see. Oh, that's what I have. Okay, well, we can just go on in and get, um, you ready? Get the work? What'd you have? Oh. So, uh, you you got, Christina. You got... Christina's there. Mississippi. Okay, good Love morning. It. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one more announcement. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and I believe uh, it was F3. Family First Fellowship. Family First Fellowship is going, the last Sunday of this month. Good morning to the Newton family. Good morning, good morning. Yay. Family First Fellowship, we set aside every fifth Sunday of the year. Um, and we believe that, you know, First of all, family is your first ministry, but we want to mm -hmm. demonstrate that. We demonstrate it throughout the year. Say, hey, spend time with your family. Yeah. You know, um, read the word, worship with your family. Mm -hmm. And as a church family, we come together. So if we are strong in our family, personally at home, that means our community is strong. That means our church is strong. We know yeah. that now. We are the church where we come together right. as a body of believers, yeah. coming together, being strong and fellowshipping together. Mm -hmm. um, I understand it's a sports game day. Um, this uh, is board games house. and yes, other games yes, we play. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it'll be some anointed <laughs> trash talking. Uh, so y'all just, you know, be ready. Uh -huh. uh, come with your game face. It's going to be good stuff. Yeah, it is. F3. So the last Sunday in this month at the Ministry House, we look forward to seeing you there. Also, we'll see you guys on third Sunday at the Ministry House as well. In the fourth Sunday, mm -hmm. we'll, still, uh, we'll be in service at the hotel with the Ladies Ministry, right? Table talk. Yes. So there'll be a, it's a be a bit replay on that Sunday. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to do that and worship with your family. Absolutely. So well, 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 well. We're I oh someone said we were ready for the word. Well, praise the Lord. We're ready to serve the word today. We're I mean even this morning just sitting and sharing with the word, which is like so much coming out, still coming mm -hmm. out and coming out with this mm -hmm. soul therapy. You know, this summer on our Wednesday nights is going to be soul training, and um, like we said the other Sunday, it, it's more it more than what we thought it was going to be. God has been real villain daily of what he meaning by the soul training, even with this yeah. soul revival. It's just going all over the land about soul revival. When I heard it last year and this year, I'm hearing so many people talk about it, but mm -hmm. here for Ewall Nation, here for the ones who connected to us and what God is saying concerning this soul revival for us to wake up as a believer, wake up mm -hmm. as a Jesus follower, wake up as a disciple. Don't just lay here and just, I received him. It's so much more than that to know who you are and whose you mm -hmm. are. It's, it's just like saying, I know those words. Yeah, I know I belong to God and all, but it's so much more to actually live in this world with, uh, vic in victory. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, the, um, July, Fast Focus. Do you want to say anything on that before we go in? Yeah, let's jump on in there. Real okay. Quick. Uh, the July Fast Focus is concentrate on the good. And this this Sunday scripture is the same as last Sunday scripture. Why? Because I felt that we need to reiterate. It says, this is taken from Psalm 27, 13. I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm -mm. Regardless of what has gone in, regardless of what has happened in your life, uh, up until this point, regardless of what has happened to your life, like this morning, last week, or wherever, mm -hmm. determine in your mind, determine in your spirit, agree with the Holy Spirit, that you will see the goodness. See. Mm -hmm. I, he said, I remain confident in this. What, what are you confident of? That I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm -mm. One, one, one translation said, I would have fainted unless I failed to, look, I would have fainted. And as I believed to see the goodness, I would have fainted. I would have been. I would have been done. I, I would have walked away. But I believed I would see goodness. Amen. I would believe I would see the goodness of the Lord. See the difference. The goodness of the Lord is everlasting. Amen. Certain certain goodnesses have expiration dates. My goodness, mm -hmm. His goodness, Her goodness, different people's goodness. Mm -hmm. But the Lord's goodness is a complete package of everything that mm -hmm. is needed for your life. And you remain confident in that. I'm going to see God's goodness in my life. 
You know, yeah, I know the kids are, are flipping out, but I'm going to see God's goodness in my life. Yeah, I know uh, me and my ex are at odds or, or me and my spouse are in a misunderstanding right now, but I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah, I know we've had budget cuts at my job and they're cutting back on my hours, but I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living on this side of the ground, yeah. on this side of heaven. Not the sweet by and by. You have more to that. Yeah, you'll have more then. Okay, so I'm glad morning when this life is over. But it, it's like sometimes people we neglect to see that we do have good in our life right now because we're pushing so hard to get out of here to get to that next great day. And God has goodness for you here in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I remember my pastor said this one time and it stuck with me. God wants to hunt you down and do you good. The blessing, the Bible, one scripture talks about, talks about how the blessing will, will overtake you. Mm -hmm. That means it's coming after you. Mm -hmm. So concentrate on the good. Focus on the good that is in your life and speak the good that is not there yet. So it'll manifest. Go. Yeah, and this is going, it's going right into what we're going to be speaking on, on today about the eye gate and the, um, the ear gate and what you see. So last Sunday was saying how you, um, what you see in here is, is how you see properly. We were talking about that. Mm -hmm. We were talking about there are, um, you know, there are things you will hear. Mm -hmm. There are things you will hear though you, though you won't see, mm -hmm. but you will know. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how um, you have to go with what you know because of what you heard. And so in this fast focus, really taking this fast focus seriously, really say seeing the uh, goodness. Mm -hmm of the Lord in my day. Mm -hmm. Let's not take your situation, just in your day, it is possible. And I shared this a, a few times about Joyce Myers, um, her, this is her, what is it? It's not a title. Um, what her show? Her show. Her um, ministry? Her probably? ministry mm -hmm. of. Um, she does have a segment also about talking, right? No, one? as far as. Um, enjoying everyday life. Enjoying everyday life. And it is possible. It's up to us and how we can do that. So we're going to dig in that today about seeing the goodness of God. And, you know, you can see him in so many areas that we, but if that soul is not renewed, that's what hinders us from seeing it because his good is there. He's speaking, uh, he's blessing, mm -hmm. and we can hinder ourselves from not seeing the goodness of God in our lives. But we're going to just go ahead and prayer, open up in prayer and um just get ready yeah. um, to see God in this word on today concerning you. Come before the Lord for yourself mm -hmm. right now. Wherever you are, come before the Lord for yourself. And just go ahead and just um, yield in right now. Mm -hmm. And we pray today that God's wisdom invade your soul. Yes. <laughs> and we pray that every soul will yield their will to your will, Lord. Yes, Lord for their lives and that they will identify Satan's disturbance in their souls. Yes. I declare they will receive your truth and apply it daily yes. in Jesus name. Yes, amen. Amen. We want you all to receive God's truth and apply it. Last time we were talking about, yeah, we can get it, but we have to obey it. Applying this, obeying it. Mm -hmm. So, with this truth that you receive in the word, it is so important to apply it. And what I've been talking about is us as Christians coming to church, showing up to church, but not showing up to Jesus. We can hear the word, know the word, know what the scriptures are, but are we applying it? Are we um, allowing it to renew our souls? Mm -hmm. Are we um, actually obeying what the Lord is saying? Are we obeying what the Holy Spirit is prompting us to do? And when I said early about going into the areas of your soul where it's unrenewed for God to heal it, don't be afraid of it. And once pastors, you said this on a couple of Sundays ago about that subconscious, that is like a shield over a, a place, veil. a veil, it's like a veil, yeah, a veil mm -hmm. over that place mm -hmm. of your, um, your mind there mm -hmm. and with the mind how the mind works sometimes we can just operate out a partial of our mind and so that part right there what need to be uh, healed mm -hmm. is that veil that's over it but we are satisfied now because we have learned to operate out this side of our brain out this side of our soul so that brain is so 
um, like you, the Bible let us know we're complex. We're complex. Yeah, but, we but are. It's, we, it's, and look, the word complex doesn't mean difficult, okay? Yeah. Why are you being so complex? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean that. It, it, it is saying that um, how the how the mind is, um, oh, man. It, it, it talks about the, I want to just get this so I can else. say it right. <laughs> how we talk about how the mind, it's like th some people teach that it's like the mind is three the parts. parts. Yeah. And it's like the, mm -hmm. the conscious, the subconscious, mm -hmm. and the unconscious. Yeah. Parts. Mm -hmm. And it talks about that sub that subconscious part is that, that thin veil. Mm -hmm. That there are things underneath that haven't been addressed, that should be addressed, should be uh, um, tended to. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the mind itself knows how to cut that part mm -hmm. off and mm -hmm. still kind of operate. operate. We know right, how to right, operate. Right. Not mm -hmm. functioning properly, but we know how to operate. Mm-hmm. So we, we push that down, you know, trauma, we push that down, uh, tragedy, push that down, mm -hmm. a fear, something that, you know, took place in life. Somebody wrote on our in our book that wasn't supposed to write in our book. And, and so we take all that and we suppress it. Uh, but then we go up top here and just keep op keep fun uh, operating, not properly functioning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and there are times when the word comes to us and the word comes alive and the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit comes in and begins to try, try to peel back. Yeah that veil to begin the healing process mm -hmm. and we'll oh, nope 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 that's that, that's there's nothing wrong with that just leave that where that is mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit like let that go yeah okay mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. we, but we still got to come back to it no I'm, I'm I'm good I'm good and you saying fine when you're not fine is not fine mm -hmm. um there is I was sharing with, with uh honey here that there was a a billboard that I saw, which leads into what you had shared. Okay. And it says, a wound that is neglected is a wound that is infected. Mm -hmm. And the same holds true to a soul, a, a fractured, wounded soul, a fractured, wounded soul that is neglected come, becomes infected. And, 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 and the toxins flow throughout your inner man and into your other areas of your life. It, it affects your, your uh, relationship with your parents, your, your siblings, your, your, your spouse, your children, uh, your job. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it affects decisions that you make yeah. mm -hmm. or the decisions that you fail to make. Mm -hmm. uh, choices that you refuse to, to um, choices that you refuse to make or um, <coughs> things you let linger, things you, you don't address. And, that's because of the toxins that are in your inner man. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll say it like this. A fractured, wounded soul is the product of improper hearing, mm. improper seeing, seeing yeah. and improper speaking. Mm -hmm. Say it one more time, Pastor. Say a fractured, wounded soul mm -hmm. is, a, is a product of improper hearing, mm -hmm. improper seeing, and improper speaking, improper hearing, because it, 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 it Bible says faith cometh by hearing, yeah. hearing by the word of God. So I got to hear it. I got to hear it to understand it, to understand it, to believe it, to believe it, to live it, to think it, and live it. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do that, if all I'm around is negative speaking, that's what I'll be hearing. That's what I'll understand. That's what I'll believe. That's what I'll live. Wow. That's it. So. Yeah. So I tell, with this, um, this series, this, uh, I guess, just the year we're talking about this renewing the soul part, I'm telling you, I am experiencing a deep, you know how you say I would need a deep house cleaning mm -hmm. of your natural house? I'm experiencing a deep cleaning in my soul. As we're teaching, as God revealing the things that speak, you know, I'm getting cleaned as well. It's not like, oh, so you, it's so for you all, it's right. for us as well. And I'm telling you the experience from the dreams mm -hmm. and visions and what I'm experiencing is, and asking what this dream is about. What does this mean right here? God and seeking God. I'm saying go and seek God. And I told you all, if you don't be afraid of what place the doors that's been closed of that subconscious that 
pastor is explaining to you all, God is going to go with you in that. And he took me in a place and showed me. And I didn't know I yeah. had a residue of something from years, years, years ago. And I remember just writing, I wrote, and I mean tears of God, you're cleaning me. Mm -hmm. I want to be so clean, you know, that mm -hmm. that soul and spirit just line up so well together that my body, you know, follows that. But I'm, um, I thought about, uh, we had a housekeeper and my husband told me, I mean, she did, um, they did a phenomenal job and just the, uh, it was phenomenal of the cleaning. And my husband said, why are you paying them? You could pay me. I'll, I'll clean it, you know, and <laughs> it didn't last long. And then, but when I did it, it was but clean. when he did, he's a good cleaner, right? It was clean when I did it. But I'm telling you, if he washed this, I don't have to rinse anything out. I know he washed it. I'm fine. The bathrooms are clean. Thank God for his mother, Emma Peterson, teaching him well. And but the thing, it didn't stay. So what I'm saying in this, I saw this as a lot of times. No, you didn't get paid. Didn't get paid. <laughs> no, but a lot of times no. <laughs> we want to do it another way and thinking that that's okay. But we, I'm saying let God. That was professionals coming in to clean, and they had mm. a schedule. Right. Right. And so then I, I stopped them from doing that and then went with my husband's schedule, which the schedule didn't work out. No. OK, but what I'm saying is in your soul, don't do it like that. Don't give it to someone else. Let God clean it. Don't say uh, I'll get let, I'll do it. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. oh, I'm OK. I'm OK. Yeah. That's you You're allowing okay. yourself to do it. Oh, it's all right. No, if God is showing it to you, no, it's not all right. Mm, right. You're telling yourself, oh, I'll get. No, it's not all right. Let God do it. Mm -hmm. Don't allow yourself to be just OK. Yeah. You shouldn't just settle for okay. You want to settle for great. Yeah. You know, functioning properly, yeah. not functioning functioning in a place of uh, existing. Yeah. And, you know, God has taken us to a place of living. You know, a lot of times we don't even know what's in our subconscious and why we flow in the way that we flow and thinking that it's okay. A lot of times we think, it's okay because that's the norm for us. Mm -hmm. But that's not God's best for us. And, you know. That's something. You say it's a norm for us, yeah. but it's not God's best for right, us. Right, right. And a lot of times we flow with what, what the norm is. And when I say I want everything that God has for me, and some of those things, like I said last last week, it could be painful in mm -hmm. this place of getting healed because you have to go back to that pain, whatever that pain, whatever the enemy, Satan, disturbed you mm -hmm. in your peace of mm -hmm. your soul. Well, to get to the healing part, it comes back up. You don't want your your mind to go through that again. You don't want to feel that again. Like, you know, you smell a perfume, whatever fragrance you smell, it takes you back. Mm -hmm. We was just driving yesterday. Um, uh, and I have a, we haven't been in Tampa in a while since yeah. we moved here. We, when we take the interstate to go somewhere, yeah, we pass it through Tampa. But actually, Tampa, you know, where I used to live or, you know, and we went back to places and it brought up memories. And it's mm -hmm. like, Oh my gosh, I'm crying like, oh my God, look at this, look at that. So, you know, have, but it'll take you back to a place where you used to be. Yeah. Even from a little girl going to church, I remember the road that we were on. And I literally fell, I was in a car and I felt like I was 10 years old again in this car mm -hmm. um, with my friend coming from church, going to church with her mom. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, it just put me back to the places. Some places would take you, the thoughts in your mind would take you back to that that place if you was hurt. But those yeah. things I, I had the memory of, it was good things that I mm -hmm. remember, but it took me back when I was that age. It took me back when I, what I experienced on that time. But if it's a place where it's hurt or a place where you were um, abused and you have to go mm -hmm. back in the mind, we don't want to go back to that. But no. to be healed, yeah. God is going to take you in that place and that pain going to be there, but he's with you in this one here. Mm -hmm. You know, he's with you in this part of the traumatic, the trauma that's been there mm -hmm. to be healed. You know, you get his treatment mm -hmm. in this trauma mm -hmm. that is you're going to come out and the, healed. The, the, yeah. The, the thing is also, because the Bible talks, says that that's the job of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's to lead and guide you into all truth. All truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'll lead and guide you into all truth. And I love how God will do it. He will give you the understanding of what, why you feel the way you feel. Yeah. Without having you relive that trauma. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's how good he is. That's how good yes. he is. Yes. He take you, you, you back. You may see flashes of it on screen, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't take you to that place where you were. Because Satan disturbs. Yes. 
Satan but he disturbs did, peace. Yeah, yeah. God mm-hmm. restores peace. He Satan restores. God and restores peace. peace. Satan restore. disturbs peace. Yeah. And while God will walk you through those areas, He's restoring, restoring. you. Restoring. That's While it. He's walking you through it. That's it. And uh, that's how that's how so many can get to a place where they actually feel sorry for the individual who yeah. uh, who who hurt them. They, they, they begin to restoring. pray that's for it. them who hurt them because. Uh, God is doing the restoration. God is restoring, mm-hmm. not the enemy. When the enemy tries to do it, uh, you'll come back with a vengeance. Yeah. You'll come back bitter. <laughs> you'll come back, yeah. you know, I forgot all about that. Now I know what you did. And you, you, you come back um, yeah. uh, in a way to do harm, mm-hmm. in a way to walk out of character mm-hmm. with how God designed you. That's it. But God, now, God wants to heal you. He wants to heal you. Here's the thing. <clears throat> and I had, I had to type this okay. in because uh, I have one scripture we're going to hit and then okay. you can flow into what you have here right. and this is our prayer during this soul therapy sessions mm-hmm. during these well, I guess we can call it during these soul therapy <laughs> sessions you got a therapy session yeah I got a therapy session at one o'clock I got one at six you know I got one on Tuesday at four you know therapy session so our prayer during this therapy session is Psalm 119 and 18 and I want you to write that down. Psalm 119, 18. And I'm going to hit you with it from the New King James. And I'm going to hit you with it from the Passion. And I had it. And okay, as he's getting that, I said, share a nugget with you all a few weeks back. And that is settle down and find you. So right now, we're going to just settle down and just say to yourself, settle down and I'm going to find me. Sweet. Settle down. And I'm gonna find, find you. me. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is our prayer for you guys. Um, Psalm 118, verse 19 says this. Open to and this is this is uh the psalmist's prayer. He says, Open to me the gates of righteousness. Oh, excuse me. Psalm, wait a minute. Psalm 119, 18. I'm reading Psalm 18, 119. Just out of I'm like, what is going on here? That didn't look right at all. Here we are. Okay. Open my eyes. That I may see wondrous things Mm. from your law. Hmm. Open my eyes that I I may see wondrous things from your law. Now, the Passion says it like this Open my eyes to see the miracle wonders hidden in your word. Mm -mm -mm. Meaning what? For me to understand how to properly hear. For me to understand how to properly see, for me to understand how to properly speak, I need to be able to dig into God's word and and take take hold mm-hmm. of the miracle wonders that are in his word. Mm-hmm. Do you notice it says here, hidden? Open my eyes so I can yeah. see things that are hidden. Mm-mm-mm. Why? Because there, a, a, a mere man can approach a, a mere man can approach the gospel. He can't. He can't approach the word of God, and say, "Oh yeah, I know what that meant." Mm-mm-mm. It 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 takes a a a someone who's gifted in the word, because God gives gifts without repentance. So the gift of the word, or a re a renewal mm-hmm. of the mind, or a made new of the spirit. And when a person is made new in the spirit, your spirit man has changed instantly. You're mm-hmm. saved immediately. As soon as you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved instantly. Now he's your, and when, at that moment, he's your Savior. Now, when it comes to conditioning your soul, you have to make him your Lord. Ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> and there's a difference. A lot of people say, I, I, think God, I think my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he's your Savior, yeah. But he's not your Lord because you won't allow him to be Lord of your life. But here's the thing. Jesus can't be responsible. Right, I wrote this down. Hang on a minute. You can't make Jesus responsible for your life if you don't make him Lord over your life. Hmm. Lord, my life, you know, we like to sing certain songs. My life is in your hands. And, you know, and it's like, is it? Mm-hmm. Because his, his goal for your life is to be whole and healed That's in every area. Mm-hmm. And when he goes to peel back that veil and you say no, or he goes to pull back that Band-Aid and you say, ah, just leave it where it is. Because, it, 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 you know, he said, I have to, we have to, we have to treat it. Because if we don't treat it, it's not going to heal. Mm-hmm. 
That'll be okay. It'll be okay. No, it won't because you have to be able to hear what is being said. Faith cometh by hearing. And honey just said it earlier, repenting. This is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. The renewing of the mind is ongoing. The tending and treating your spirit man is ongoing. The cultivating your inner man is ongoing. The hearing is ongoing. The seeing yeah. is ongoing. Mm -hmm. The speaking is ongoing. Right. I'm constantly changing my world because I constantly, I'm speaking what I'm hearing mm -hmm. so it can align to what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, um, I was having a conversation with one of our children and they were talking about the things they were dealing with and, and I don't know, this may be it, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, and my wife said this, she said, that that can't be because that's not what I prayed for. That, that's, that's, no, what do you mean? It's, it's going to work out in your favor because you're speaking God's favor over the situation. You know how it is, you know, when you, you, you know, we pass 40, so we old now. And uh, no, well, you know, well, it comes a time, you know, you turn 60, you have to go ahead and hang it up and let it go. No, he says, with long life, in Psalm 91, it says, with long life, he will satisfy you mm -hmm. and show you forth his salvation with long life. So it's like, I got, I got to change what I'm, if I want to change what I'm seeing, if I want to change what I'm experiencing, I got to change what I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. And if I'm changing what I'm speaking, I got to change what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. That's it. You got to change what you're hearing so you can change what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And you change what you're hearing affects your speaking. Now, so just real quick, that soul go. part was, I was sharing with you earlier as far as that seeing and hearing before salvation, before uh, believing in <laughs> uh, that way of, what you saw before salvation, what you heard mm -hmm. before salvation. So pastor just said that salvation, you know, <clears throat> that's the gift from God that, you know, save your soul. And now, you know, as far as making him Lord of our lives. So here's our soul. Now here, that so that spirit is instantly changed, right? We're on the mm -hmm. same page here, right? It's mm -hmm. instantly changed that soul part. So what have your soul been hearing? What have your soul been seeing? Then that, that gate up to your soul before uh, Jesus. That's good. Okay. And so here now we have to deal with what we saw, what we heard and what we were speaking. So we bring it over now that my spirit man is renewed. When we make him Lord of our life, what we'll do is begin to see his word, hear his word and speak his word. Right. Mm -hmm. So that unrenewed part of you is like, it'll come out It'll keep coming out. But what we're doing, we're training. That's the summer uh, for Ewald, the summer uh, soul training. Mm -hmm. We're training that soul. Now you, you are subject to the Lord because mm -hmm. he's Lord of my life. So sometimes we say, oh, but I'm saved and I did this. I thought like this or what have you. But where it comes from is what you knew before you knew God. And even so, but if you continue to feed what you, even though you know what God is saying, but you continue to feed that soul, that's what your soul will be. And so that's the results that you will have. That's why I said we're living um, beneath our privileges when we have salvation and we have, uh, God has forgiven us. God has redeemed us. God loves us. And no one who we are in him and we live beneath our privilege because we allow the unrenewed soul to lead our lives. Or we're in depression. We're in, um, uh, in defeat, this anxiety, all these things that we're defensive. We're defensive. Uh, uh, we are. We we we, get uh, we, we get this is, offensive. But we said early, like uh, this is me. This you know. This who I, I am. Peep, this who I'm, I am. I'm wired. No. But no, you no more. I. But it's you, Christ, that lives on the inside, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore. Those things, or sometimes people get frustrated because I'm speaking the word, I'm I'm hearing the word, but then this will show up, that's mm -hmm. ugly, or this thought will come. Mm -hmm. Just keep on. That's just an unrenewed soul, but you have victory over it. Mm -hmm. Now that you know the word, now that you know what God says, that's what uh, Uncle John said to me, and that's what my teacher said to me that yeah. caused me to be in that place, disturb my peace or whatever trauma that you have. That happened to you, but what God says, what happened to you he sent his son jesus to doubt on the cross for you and he took all of that 
He know he took yeah. all the shame, all that for you to heal you. Mm -hmm. So now my armor, so I'm leaning toward what God is saying concerning me. I do not as a Christian mm -hmm. have to walk. Yes, this happened to me, mm -hmm. but yes, God healed me. Yeah. Yes, I felt this way, but yet God healed me. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, he'll have you in places, but you admit, I told my husband, yes, that hurt me. Mm -hmm. In, you feel the pain. Yeah. I feel that, you know, that let me down. That disappointed me. That's real. But I do know God is real too. That he's right there to hold me. He's yeah. right there to heal me. Yeah. I'm not going to uh, omit. I'm not going to not see, see what God has done for me. Mm -hmm. Catch what I'm saying. Because I know I'm in him. Even though it hurt me, mm -hmm. I have a healer. Mm-hmm. Even though it upset me, you know, I have peace in him. And we know that in this flesh or in this part of us, we will get hurt. We will get disappointed. Mm -hmm. We will, or, or if something in your past will come up, but knowing that God is our healer. Yeah. And we know that I thank God for a therapist of God showing them how to deal with this. We say this um, subconscious, this subconscious about how it works to give us strategies of how to work it out. But we have to know God is the healer mm -hmm. of it all. Yeah. He wants to heal you. We don't want you to stay in the same place. And as a Christian, a believer to live in defeat live beneath your privileges we don't yep. supposed to live like that you got to know who you are it's like who's your dad remember you talk about well, you know what that show you are not the father you are not the father no there we got to know who our father is uh -huh. and what we have in him so with this soul therapy now go ahead. there's something you just you just said something here go ahead um and you you got me going uh -oh. somewhere else here uh you were saying about healing uh-huh and how it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it talk, we talked about that before about the therapy and how that it's uncomfortable and yeah. those days. And mm -hmm. the therapist knows when you've done it and when you haven't. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows when you you know you're really walking in it and when you're not. And and I and I, I wrote this down to say this, and you can write it down, or you can use this as a nugget, or as Pastor Angela was give you, or just put this. It said, "This is uncomfortable to me." But it's necessary for me. Yes. Mm, thank this you, is God. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, and you're admitting that. I admit it's, this. It, yeah. Holy Spirit does. I don't, like, I, don't like, I don't like going down this road. I know what's down there. But I don't it's want necessary. to go down this road. I, I, I remember what uh, is there, and I, I shut that down. But it's necessary for me to live. But it's wow. necessary. Mm -mm. You know, this is uncomfortable to me, but it's necessary, necessary. for me. It's uncomfortable with conversations. And, you know, conversations can be right. like, mm -hmm. it's like sometimes we talk about it, though, we got to have a hard conversation. Yeah. We gotta have a hard talk. Hard. No, but Gosh. heart. Heart to heart, it. sometimes a hard talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how you talked about healing. But you know, freedom is associated with healing. Mm. Freedom is associated with healing. That's it. There are many times that people were, there are many times people were on their bed with Jesus. And Jesus said, take out your bed and walk. There are different ones he said, okay, mm -mm. get up out of this coffin. There's one that he said, go show yourself to the priest. And it's like, their healing was associated with their freedom because it was the ones the lepers they couldn't go anywhere they were confined to that space and when he said go show yourself to the priest it says as they went they were healed man Joker took off they they left one came back praise and worshiped God, oh God and it says because you know this wasn't that wasn't there ten of you guys what happened to the other nine he said your faith has made you whole so okay. now he received healing and wholeness I'm, I'm laughing um, Pastor Commodore. He, I actually went in when they service for about five minutes, mm -hmm. and that's he mentioned that. Man, morning, yeah. So y'all, <laughs> he was right <laughs> now. He's here, yeah. Uh -huh. He's only right now. He, he, so he, now, look, he was <laughs> on Pastor Commodore. I was on about he five said, minutes. He said, minutes. "Teach, teacher." Yeah, oh, okay, so that, I got you, brother. Yeah, that was him. Okay, go ahead. But it's it's mm -hmm. it's freedom is associated with the healing. Yeah. Why? Because if I'm healed from this, I'm free from that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. It no longer has me. It no longer everywhere I go, it that's shows up it. too. No, I don't have to mm. compensate and make make excuses for it. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, I have a skin condition. Well, you got leprosy, man. Right? None of that. I'm free from it, so now I can go yeah. wherever. Yeah. The one that was by the pool, and Jesus said, well, do you want to be made whole? And he sits there and says, I, I, every time I try to come in, uh, you know, no one, everybody gets in before I do, and I, I have no one to carry me in. And I ask you that, you want to be made whole? Mm -mm -mm. And he said, you know what, just take up your bed and walk. Mm. And his healing was associated with his freedom. And not only was it associated with his freedom, it, it was associated with the dominion that he had because the Bible says he mm. took up his bed. 
His Jesus. bed was no longer. He, look, it's almost like walking away from the crutches. Walking away from he, the lame walk, so the crutches are gone, the canes are gone. I'm free from this thing that I used to use to support me to make excuse for what I did when people saw me. Well, you know, well, you know mm. this is you know oh, okay, but you allowed Jesus to have it. Yeah. And though it is uncomfortable for to me, it's mm -hmm. necessary for me. There was one, and let me find. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to just be jumping off. I want you to know where the scripture is. So amen, amen. You got no. I just heard when you were speaking. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm about to flow. Here we go. go ahead. Mm -hmm. John chapter eight, verse thirty-two. You have it. Okay. Mm, bless your name, God. So John chapter eight, verse thirty-two. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you, make you free. free. Mm. The truth shall make you free. It's, it's, God wants you to experience the truth and the truth is you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to be bound, crippled, wounded, down, yeah. mm -hmm. um, walking in fear, um, so penned in by pressure that you feel like you have to lie to get out to escape mm. and later on yeah you say but you, you lied about that thing right there and it's like why did I do that why did, why did you feel that you had to why did you feel that you had to uh, make up an excuse uh, for a character flaw we talked a little bit about this before um, how you know you and I were supposed to meet you and I were supposed to just say for instance somebody on the media team, I'm supposed to meet them for breakfast. And I say, they said, nine o'clock. say, nine o'clock. We got to be on time, nine o'clock. And I show up at 9.15. And I say, oh man, I, I, I'd have been here, but you know, there was an accident. And true, there was an accident, but the truth is it wasn't on your side <laughs> of the interstate. The reason you're late is because you left late. Mm -hmm. Because you, you didn't go ahead and leave when you were supposed to leave. That's a character issue. But instead of going ahead and telling the truth and say, man, I, I lost track of time. I, it, it's on me. I just left late. You make up excuses. Why would, Why do you think you have to do that? Yeah. And that's, and that's, something, that, oh uh, that's something that's under that veil. Uh, yeah. And so when I said earlier, I just want to say this. And God, just don't take this lightly of what's been said because God want to get, God wants you healed. He wants you whole and complete. But what I heard when you was talking earlier is I want you, when I said, were you yielding into God and uh, earlier as far as um, seeing ourselves in this, earlier I said that nugget was uh, settle down and find you. Mm -hmm. But as pastor was talking, I hear, see the depth of your soul. Wow, that's good. See the depth of your soul. Let, you know. Just don't live surface mm -hmm. and just stay there. And that's all you are. You right there at surface and it's okay. But really see the depth of your soul. Let God take you to the depth of your soul because you'll find out why you have to say, oh, I'm late because making excuses for things. You may think that's a little light, but that's deep. That's big. Yeah. And you want to get to the root of why we say certain things or just say, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And you're not. Mm -hmm. Get to the depth of, for your freedom, not for no one else, mm -hmm. but for your freedom. Right. Find out why you said all these little quirky things that you do or what. Get to the depth of your soul mm -hmm. because you'll find out trauma where it lies because of this happened when I was this age or uh, why I feel uh, inadequate when I'm in a certain room with certain people. But then you yeah. say it's okay. Get to the depth of your soul. Yeah. Why am I afraid for my child to be with someone else or to leave? Why am I afraid if my husband walk out and out the door and goes, why, why do I get to the depth mm -hmm. of your soul? Mm -hmm. Not to just function, yeah, but a proper way of living. Oh, that's good. Not to function, but a proper way of living. That's good. My heart, my soul is crying out that's for good. you today. That's good. To live and not just exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's my husband said, keep on, and keep on. And when God revealed that to me, I, me personally, I want to know who I am. Mm -hmm. 
and whose I belong to. If I say I'm belonging to God, but God had to show me who I am and it can't continue. It doesn't stop. It's the layers. You know, and we talked about, you know, I, you know, that religious part of us, like, okay, showing up to church mm -hmm. and almost like a check mark. I did pray. I did do this. We're talking about a relationship with God. And then that discipleship with Jesus, with Jesus followers, how did Jesus do it? Yeah. What is he saying for me? Mm -hmm. Not for my family, not for my coworkers, not for my sin, for me. Yeah. Who am I? Why am I here in this earth? That's good. And we can tell you, bless you, you know, you're in the goodness of God in this earth. You're, you know, all the, but you need to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And I actually live and not exist. It's time yeah. out for just waking up as Christian, going with a routine life. Mm -hmm. I want a revelation life. I want a refreshing life. Yeah. Not a routine life. Yeah. Not that busy life I shared with you, the acronyms of that, being under Satan's, Satan's yoke. yoke. Yeah. I just don't want to be busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want revelation in my life. What in this day? I want to see the I want to see the sun, smell the roses, enjoy this life. We I'm telling you, God is trying to get us ready to renew this. So things is gonna, you think things are worse right now in this mm -hmm. earth, it's gonna get now, the worser is not a word. It's gonna, it's gonna be worser. Worser, no, it's not. But it's, but so what he's doing is prepare. You have time now. Yeah. Do your soul training yeah. to renew this soul to be on guard for what's getting ready to happen. To mm -hmm. know that my redeemer lives, no matter what. If mm -hmm. they stop all them, you know, something. So many things are getting ready to happen. Here's, here's, and remember, just know I said that. But you got to know that the power that you have in Him mm -hmm. to overcome it. Mm -hmm. There, there are things that are going to happen. Yeah. There are things that are going to take place. Mm. But you just said he has the power to overcome it. Yeah. There, there's, okay. Let me, say, let, me say like, let me say it like this. Mm. And the children of Israel. Uh, it talks about how the, the plagues before they were, before Pharaoh finally said, you can get out of here. Uh, one of the plagues was darkness. And it said the darkness invaded the, the area. And it said how darkness was so heavy, you could feel it. Mm. Like, a, like a blanket, you feel it. And he said, but there was light in Goshen. There was, there was darkness in, Fer in Pharaoh's house, but God's people had light. Yeah. They were able that's, to operate, that's and operate in flow. So it's like this, even though it, it's going to hit the world. Yes. Even, even though all this chaos and all you know, the, the, the disease and the, and, the, and the pandemic and the price and everything, all this is, is flipping the world upside down. Because God holds your world, you're not going to flip. You're not going to be flipped upside down. That's it. Mm-hmm. God has your world in his hand. Mm -hmm. So regardless of how everything else happens in the world, you, you're, you're not of the world. Mm -hmm. well, we should feel so, so what they feel. Yeah. You're, you're not going to function. You're not going to flow as they flow. You're not going to uh, uh, re react and respond mm -hmm. as they respond and react. Um, because you're mm -hmm. hearing the word and you're, 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 you're hearing and you're receiving. My thing is this. You're, you're hearing it. With ears and perceiving it with eyes, is getting into your spirit, man, through these gates. And mm -hmm. because of this, you're free. You're enlightened. I think John 8 36, if I read, if I read further down in that same chapter, it says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, side effect of this freedom. Mm -hmm. It's like, No, I'm free. Well, technically, you're not because of this. No, no. If He sets you free, you're free indeed. Or as my son would like to say, you're free for real, for real. <laughs> you know, it's, it's for real, for real, you're free. Um, we one, know that. We had mm -hmm. one other passage that I wanted to share. Okay. I don't know, I'm just tied to this part where we talked about um, your freedom is associated with your healing. Mm -mm -mm. And it's like, if you receive healing in your soul, you, re you allow, allow, the Holy Spirit to infiltrate the un the subconscious part of you. When the healing takes place in those areas, you'll see freedom. Your you'll see your area of freedom in your soul become larger and larger and larger. Talk about enlarging Amen. territory, mm. it'll become larger and larger and larger to the point where that does not affect you anymore. 
You'll look at it and say, yeah, and keep on going. You won't, oh, don't touch it. Don't stop. You won't, you, won't, you won't be reacting in a way of a person that's wounded. Or, and it's so deep that that freedom, like you said, it enlarges, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll be so free to you release freedom to the person that hurt you. Oh, yeah. You release freedom to the hey, ones. Hey, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, last, I think it's, I don't know, it might be the last scripture, it might not be, but I know this is where we're going right now. Okay. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 28. <clears throat> Acts chapter 28, and we're going to start at verse 23. Okay. And it kind of set up a picture here. Paul is under arrest. <clears throat> And he was under arrest, and uh, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem wanted to hit him with all these charges. He was going to Rome because they were under the Roman Empire there, so they were under the, the, the guidelines of, of the Romans. Right. Um, but the Romans didn't see anything wrong with him, didn't see anything him doing anything, so they were going to release him. Uh, the Jewish leaders of Jerusalem, you know, no, no, we want to see, we want justice done. So, okay, so Paul, we're going to have to take you over to see Caesar. Mm -mm. Uh, so Paul's in chains. He's supposed to go see Caesar, but then he heard. Then he got word out to the local Jews that were there. He's on house arrest. So he got word out to the local Jews that he wanted to wanted to speak with them. He wanted mm -hmm. to, to to talk to them what was what was taking place. <clears throat> and so that's where we open up here in verse twenty three, and it says, you know, when they had set a, set a day for Paul, I'm reading this to you from the Amplified. Okay. Acts chapter 28, starting with verse 23. It's actually going to be 23 through 31. And he says, when they had set a day for Paul, they came to his lodging in large numbers. And he carefully explained Christianity to them from morning until evening, <laughs> solemnly, 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 sorry, testifying about the kingdom of God and trying to persuade them concerning Jesus, both from the law of Moses Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and from the writings of the prophets. So Paul is sitting there talking to the local, the, the, the local uh, uh, um, sector of the Jew, leader, Jewish leaders. And he's explaining to them, as they, they used to, in the Bible, sometimes they say the sect, S-E-C-T, sect mm -hmm. of people, or like a, this cult. Yes. And it's like, no, it's not a cult, it's about Christianity. And I'm trying to tell you about Jesus. And he's saying that how Jesus, you know, came both by way of the written law, law of Moses, the Torah, and by the spoken word, the written word and the spoken word. What's the spoken word? The spoken word was the writing of the prophets. You know, what do you mean the writing of the of prophets? Now unto us is born, you know, there would be a virgin with child, and we would call him Wonderful Counselor, you know, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So it is like Paul was trying to let, convince them and let them give, bring them understanding of Jesus is both written and both spoken. He is both logos and he's both rhema. He, he you know, he, he, he is the, the, the completion. He is the fulfillment of everything that has been spoken about the Messiah, written about the Messiah, written about your healing, your, your wisdom, your, your direction, your favor, your promotion, your advancement. He's, he's everything compacted in all of that. So here we go. And Verse 24, mm -hmm. some were persuaded by what he said, but others would not believe. <laughs> not did not, would not, mm -hmm. would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and they began to leave after right. Paul had made one last statement. He said, the Holy Spirit rightly spoke through Isaiah the prophet to your fathers saying what? Go to this people and say, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. Mm -mm -mm. For the heart, the understanding, the soul yeah. of this people have become dull. Mm -hmm. One translation says callous. Mm -hmm. And their eyes, they scarcely, they, what he said, they're, they're, the people have become yeah. dull and callous. Yeah. And with their ears, they scarcely hear. And they have shut their eyes to the truth. Mm -mm. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear it with their ears and understand with their heart and return to me and I would heal them. Mm -mm -mm. Therefore, let it be known to you that this message of the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They indeed will listen. 
And when he had said these things, the Jews left, arguing among themselves. And Paul lived there for two full years at his own expense. Because sometimes people are like, oh, I see the preacher riding on the church. No, Paul lived there for two full years at his own yeah. expense <laughs> in his own rented lodging and welcomed all who came to him, preaching and proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all openness and boldness, unhindered and unrestrained. Mm -hmm. So I want to get this one segment here where the where mm -hmm. Isaiah first said it. Paul said it here. Jesus, Jesus quoted the same scripture or the same words of Isaiah and Matthew, I believe. But he says this. He says... Either you'll keep you'll you'll keep he on hearing but not understanding, and you'll keep seeing and not perceiving. Why? For your heart, your soul, man, has become dull. Your soul, man, has become hardened. Your, why has it become hardened? My soul, man, has become hardened because my ears won't hear, my ear, my ears won't understand, my my eyes won't perceive, my eyes won't open to the truth. And and here 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 it goes back to what you were saying before about the healing. It says, otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return to me and I would heal That's them. Right. So if I want to be healed, I have to turn to God. In order for me to turn, my heart has to understand. In order for my heart to understand, my ear, my eyes have to see. In order for my eyes have to see, my ears have to hear. Mm -mm. So it's funny how the hearing came before the seeing again. Glory because the faith comes by hearing. hearing. Mm -hmm. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. So I hear it before I see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear that your children, I hear that your sons and daughters will come to know the Lord. Somehow you'll hear it before you see it. Mm -hmm. But all this has to take place. The healing of the soul must take place. And the only way that takes place is that your understanding heart will turn to the Lord. And the reason your understanding heart turns is because your eye, your ears, your eyes saw what your ears heard. Healing is tied to the understanding of the soul, which is tied to the seeing, which is tied to the hearing. I want my soul healed, therefore I must hear. That's it. Mm -hmm. Hear what? Hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Hear God's word. That's it. Mm -hmm. I must look. I'm, I I need understanding. I need perception. Mm -hmm. Open my eyes, God. And the only way I can get that is through hearing His word. That's why we said our prayer for you in this therapy session is that God will open your eyes that you may see yes. the miracle working mm -hmm. of His law, of His of His word, His instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Paul said it like this: I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. If you get this word, if you hear what he's saying, you'll see what he said. Mm -mm. And I'm, mm. I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm, I don't okay. know. You go ahead. <laughs> right. So in this seeing and this hearing, and as I said, pre-salvation, all things that um, we saw and heard before we heard and saw Jesus. But, you know, I read this little article um, about kids, they're, they're twin boys and between age of five and seven. And the parents had noticed that um, one of the sons was just really, really negative and the other one was positive. And to, you know, they're, in, they're playing together. This one is always complaining. Uh, and the other one's just happy wherever, whatever happens, he's, he's happy. And they was asking themselves, what is it we're, you know, Raising them the same, they're in the same household. Uh, they can have the same identical things. And this one is complaining about something. And so they went and sought out therapy um, for the family and say, how do we deal with this? Because one is just really negative and the other one uh, is on the positive side of, of life and things. And for them to be that young. And so what he went, so what the therapy did was a uh, exercise with the boys. They put uh, one boy in a room with... Uh, just a floor of toys, new toys. Some toys was just used. Some toys was brand new. Oh, some was, you know, gift wrapped and all that. He had opened those up. And the other room, the boy, uh, <clears throat> he had, 
uh, manure in his room. That's all he had. And so, yeah. Into, so he had manure. Ah, manure. Okay. And so when they came back, they waited 30 minutes and they came back to see, see the boys and the one that was, uh, had all the toys in, in the room, they asked him, you know, how's he, how he's doing. And, uh, that, that one boy with a full of toys, he said that it was too many toys. He complained that it was just too many toys. He didn't want to unwrap the toys and why he had to do all that. He complained the whole time. And then the the boy that was in the manure, they said they walked in. Um, so the boy that they walked in that was negative. negative, he was just sitting there pouting. And they was like, why is he pouting? He has all that. And that's what he explained. Mm -hmm. There's too many toys in here. And, and I had opened this one here. But the other boy with the manure, he was just throwing up, throwing the manure up all over, just like, ah, oh, just looking all excited. He said, what, you know, want to know how he's feeling. He said, well, all this manure, I know it must be a pony somewhere. <laughs> so he was talking about the pony. So what I'm saying is, how are we seeing things? Yeah. So whatever manure is in your life, see something's good going to come out of that. So here he was saying that what we're saying to here, they are brothers, they're twins, mm -hmm. but what they were saying was totally different. Their perspective of life mm -hmm. that was so different. And I said, with your soul, when you renew your soul, no matter what situation you're in, you will acknowledge God. You will see God. We saying seeing God in this fast focus this month, uh, what is it saying? Um, seeing the goodness seeing of the God. Good. So even if you Concentrate are, on the good. you know, surrounded with, the wealth of all these toys or what have you, you got new things that's coming in your life. See God in that. Even if you say that's a mess in my life, this is mm -hmm. not going well, but you can still see God in that. But he saw it must be a pony. He was excited about the pony. And we can get excited about the things. Yes, this is happening, but I'm excited to know God is going to bring, <laughs> I mean, something good has got to come out of this because I trust God. I believe God. His word says this. And that's how that, you know, that soul has been renewed because now you're seeing through God's eyes, not your natural eye. Mm -hmm. it, I'm telling you, this have to be, go deeper. When I say go to the depths of your soul, seeing the deep part of it, seeing what God intended for it to be. Yes, this did happen, but that was not good. God's intention and you can get and actually knowing that God has given us all these emotions, but we have control over them. So therefore I'm going to uh, work in that place where I have control over it. So no matter what in your life, where you sit right now today, remember now you don't yield your soul to God, Yeah. wherever you are, where you sit right now, see the goodness of God. He's trying to show you himself. He's trying to show you what he can do in this. You don't have to see on your, your natural eye. You can see with that spiritual eye. And I would, do you have anything? else are we leaving no, on no that? We, we're leaving on that you you, you but this, shut us down baby this part here uh when you talk about that return as we as we ending um here we always offer salvation rededication and you know place you want to call home to uh to be uh, we're called to uh, be uh disciples uh discipleship here so if you want to say i want to i need a place to grow um we offer uh church um, membership joining with us here at Ewall, e but I was thinking about a return policy and different stores have a return policy. Um, some, if you have the receipt, they will, you know, you can get your, whatever you paid for it back. And if you don't have a receipt, some policies like store if it's credit. on, yeah, store credit, or if it was on sale, if you don't have your receipt, you have, even though you paid the full price, you have to get the money back for what we is offered now. So if it was a hundred dollars then, but now it's on sale for seventy five, you won't get the full hundred dollars back. You get the seventy five dollars back, right. and it's just different return policies. But I was thinking about God and His return policy, and I'm gonna offer something to you here today: returning your soul to God, His policy. I love That's it that good. when we return our soul to Him. That's good. No matter how your soul is looking, you say a part of me, that unrenewed part, mm -hmm. I have the renewed part, but I'm just saying all of you just returning yourself to you because you done came up in a knowledge yeah. that you're not your own. You belong yeah. to him, right? And yeah. I'm going to return my soul to God. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He, you get a hundred percent, even the more he heals you. That's good. That's good. It's guaranteed. You said, but I lost the receipt. I lost. You come and just return your soul. Even you return it in tears. It doesn't matter. His policy, if you have tears mm -hmm. or you just don't even know what to do, if you return it, he is a guarantee you'll be healed. Yeah, guarantee. It's a great exchange with him. So if that's you, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. 
That's good. You can just, because he's the one who gave, you know, you three parts, the spirit, soul, mm -hmm. you know, possess a soul and live in the body. Mm -hmm. Just return it back to them now that you have the knowledge mm -hmm. that I don't have to um, try to train myself here. I don't have to clean my own house here without God's help. You know, yeah. he'll help yeah. me do this. Yeah. I can just return it now. He'll show me how. He'll heal those places mm -hmm. where I don't want to even, I don't even know it was there or uh do know and don't want to touch those places, mm -hmm. but I invite you to return your soul to him and allow him to heal you. Because mm -hmm. some say I'm saved and um, I know Jesus, my Lord and Savior. You know, I have rededicated my life. And mm -hmm. here's a part here that I know that my soul needs to be healed. We're going to pray for that as well. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we are honored. Mm -hmm. to invite you in to know who he is and for him to come in and save your soul and start this journey with him. Allow him to heal you. Allow him to open your eyes that you can see properly, that mm -hmm. you can function properly. Glory to God. As an individual, that you can be free. It's what I, I love about um, that guy. He said, it will make you free. It's like, it's nothing you have. It, it just make you free. It's you just free. Yeah. Make it'll make it, you free. You make, free you know, you. just it make you. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> if you don't, you know, she said, I, I, if you're in that place, I know I need to rededicate my my life back to him because I'm not allowing him to be the Lord of my life. Yeah. I receive salvation, yeah. but he's not Lord over my finances. Mm -hmm. He's not Lord over my decisions. Mm -hmm. he, I, I'm not letting him Lord of my relationship. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm going to rededicate back, allow him to be Lord over my soul. Yes. So if that's you, that's it. at this very moment, where you are, Mm -hmm. someone, yeah, you can call in right now to pray with you. Uh, but where you are, let's just go ahead and pray. The ones who's receiving Jesus, the Lord and Savior right now, let's go ahead and mm -hmm. uh, pray with you all. And the ones who's there, join them in right now. Let's pray that uh, they receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, rededicate their life. And if you say, hey, I want to be a part of every walk of life to continue, because we want to um, love you with the love of God and teach you with the word of God. Mm -hmm. If that's you, just let us know. We welcome you in today. But where you are, if you want to say, want to uh, pray, and I repeat after you, or you want, want me to go ahead and pray? Well, I want to share this. Okay, you want to share something? Just, so, yeah, well, you something, know what? We'll yeah. just, we'll just, just back yes. yes for a word mm -hmm. of prayer. We'll just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. For those that have made the decision, mm -mm -mm. those that have made the intelligent choice yes. to receive you as their Lord and Savior, yes. we thank you that, that you have you sent your son mm -mm -mm. to die for them. We mm -mm. declare this, that they have exchanged um, beauty for ashes. They have exchanged uh, mourning for the oil of joy. They have exchanged the spirit of heaviness for a mm -hmm. garment of praise. Uh, Pastor Angela was saying earlier, there has been an exchange. Uh, we, we declare that those that are rededicating, yes. that have walked away and let stuff happen, they won't, you know, for some reason, God, we didn't let you uh, remove the bandage. Uh, and, and we just let other things take its place. And we we, we went off of what we saw and, and, and heard rather than what we knew. And, and they're coming back. And we declare, Father God, that mm. your arms are open to, to receive them as your own. Uh, those that have wanted to be members uh, we say to them, Father God, welcome home. Amen, uh, to those amen. that have, have um, lost their way, for those that want to receive salvation, we declare that you repeat this after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you. I thank you. That you, you sent your son. That you sent Jesus son, Christ. Jesus Christ. To die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. I receive him as my Savior. I receive him as my Savior. I receive him as my Lord. I receive him as my Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For saving me. For saving me. Thank you. Thank you. For this new lease. For this new lease. On life. On life. Thank you. Thank you. For this new chapter. For this new chapter. This new beginning. This new beginning. I have been made new. I have been made new. No longer the same. No longer the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory. Glory to, God. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You gonna say something else? 
Mm, oh, I thought you were. No, I don't think so. Okay, well, praise I mean, God for the ones who uh, received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. We praise God for you, rededicated. The ones who just received the prayer for their soul, uh, we praise God for that. We praise God today just for his word, uh, his word of revelation that's yeah. in our lives. And as we um, close out today, let's just um, remember that I want to say it again about the Ladies' Table Talk uh, conference that's um, coming um 20, July 22nd through 24th. Mm -hmm. We have ladies that's coming in from, I saw Ohio, Pittsburgh, uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we're excited Virginia. about that. Yeah, people coming in okay. from all over. Yeah, just, South Carolina is South coming, Carolina in. Yeah, is yeah. coming yeah. in. So we're uh, so appreciative. Go ahead and register. And as you saw here today, you now we're talking about the soul therapy. That's just going to bleed right on into the conference. So just get ready to see yourself, see Jesus at this conference that's. Um, ordained and um just waiting for you just come on and receive it's a safe place um also we have opportunity i love this we have an opportunity to give into the ministry yes. um your uh your love gift mm -hmm. we're just gonna love on the lord right now and as we always been taught here at every walk of life that it is a relationship mm -hmm. with god mm -hmm. and just your relationship you thanking him for what he's already uh done and what he has given you yes and let's at this moment let's just hear from god to say um in your giving mm -hmm. let's just love on him at this very moment as you preparing uh it's going to come on your screen if it's not, if already is there i'm not sure um it's there tell you uh it's there now how to give and we're gonna we're gonna pray over your uh your giving your mm -hmm. offering because we want the Lord to bless you. I want, we want you to see His goodness in your giving. You want you to see yeah. God in your giving. Mm -hmm. In the name all of giving, Jesus. Uh, all, all, all giving, all giving, as a child of God is relationship based. Mm -hmm. It's grace based. It's, it's it's the spirit. Oh man, this is this is good stuff. We're gonna ask you to just yeah. as we pray, we're gonna stop. We're gonna just go ahead and flow how we need to flow. We ask you to repeat after me. If you have your phone, you're doing your cash. If you're doing cash app, if you're texting by, you know, you're texting to give. Uh, if you're going to mail it in, however it may be. If you have a check, hold it up. If you have cash, hold it up. If you have your phone, hold it up. If you, you know, you have your hand. My pastor, I haven't got mine yet. Fine. Hold your hand up to receive so that you can give. Because Pastor Angela and I have walked that road as well. We believe God for a certain amount to give. And once yeah. we received it, even though, you know, here you go. It's one part is like, well, you can use, no, no, no. We already know where this is going. This is good ground, and we're sowing. And God, God is going to. If you, if your heart is to give, God will open avenues and doors for you to do so. Mm -hmm. So we actually just repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I have brought from my house. I have brought from my house the holy thing. The holy thing that belongs to you. That belongs to you. My tithe. My tithe. My offering. My offering. My love gift. My love gift. All belongs to you. All belongs to you. I give because I trust you. I give because I trust you. I give because I honor you. I give because I honor you. I give because I love you. I give because I love you. Look down from heaven. Look down from heaven and bless and bless my family. My family. My church. My church and me and me. I, I, so, so, therefore, therefore, I reap, I reap, I look, I look for a harvest, for a harvest with expectation, with expectation in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I hope you Praise understand God. that with us. I hope so. <laughs> Glory to God. I just love it that um, you're coming along with us, a partner with us, joining in with us to be a blessing to um, you all, this community. Uh, we realize, and I hope you all know that it's not just about us what we said last Sunday up under this roof of um e wall mm -hmm. it's a blessing to all you yes. know so uh just like we have to have the lights that come on at e wall when we meet at the ministry house and the the rent paid there but you know what even in within us if there's something that's needed that's what e wall is about mm -hmm. uh so we join together to be a blessing and we love you all we thank you uh remember Please. Jesus is Lord and it's about where you're going. And not where you've been. God bless you guys. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night.